Welcome. This tutorial is about modeling with splines. For creating splines, you basically need two or three things. The first one is to be found right here underneath my mouse cursor. There's the spline icon and there are all the splines we need. First of all, there are six splines you can draw yourself, those yellow ones, and the blue ones are preset splines um, you can you can use and there are a lot of options how to manipulate them. I will just choose the circle here and then there's another option you might find useful this is called mesh spline and there's a lot you can do with the spline and we will just keep this as a floating menu by clicking on this dots those tiny little dots here and we can just move it there i'll do it again just go to mesh spline and then take this surface here and now just leave the left mouse button should work like this. Let's just go through all those um, preset splines. If you just read the names, it doesn't really tell you what it's able to do because, for example, if you're using the arc, there is, uh, if you go to the attributes manager, more than just the shape you immediately see, you can change its angle like this you can change its orientation you can change uh, the way it is subdivided like non or natural uniformly and by numbers or degrees, it depends, you can um, change how often it gets subdivided. Then, quite interesting, there is a way to change the type of the arc. So there are, like, there's a thing like sector, which closes the spline and makes different shape segment which looks like a piece of cake and ring and in some cases you get new options then then like an inner radius or something like that you really should check through all those options for each of this these blue splines because there are a lot I will just show you maybe two more, but first of all, I delete the arc and I might show you the helix. There are many things you can change about it, like its length or how often it rotates or if it should be more rotating on the one side than on the other one. And you can animate all those values in case you're interested. Maybe I show you one more out of the list. Yep, there's, for example, the flower item here. And there are more things you can change like this. Then, in some cases, you need science or some logos. You can do them by text. Just type in some name. And then you will have a spline which looks like this. Now there's a surprise. If you're trying to render out a spline, you're not going to be able to, to see this. Let's just click on the render button and the whole screen is black 
that's because the spline is infinitely thin, so it doesn't have any solid geometry. In order to make a spline visible, you need so-called generators. They are to be found here. You can use extrude, lathe, loft and sweep nerves. Those generators that can be combined with splines are easy to uh, to to find by their those white lines. These stands for stand for splines, and the green surfaces indicate what the generator is going to um, yeah generate out of them. If you're taking the extrude nerves, for example, uh, a new object appears in our object list, and you just have to drag and drop the spline in there, and then you'll have a solid object which can be rendered. I just press Command R and now I have solid geometry there. For personal reference I will just click on the up arrow here two times and change the default object color to 80% gray. To see the topology of my geometry better I also go to display grow shading lines so I see all the polygons that are created each time even when I don't click on the object. So now one thing that is really important and this counts or this is important on any spline no matter if it's a self-drawn spline or a preset one um, is the subdivision of the spline because a spline cannot be infinitely round it needs to be separated in order to create polygon objects out of it. You can see that Cinema 4D automatically uses more points where there is a curve going on and it uses less points in straighter or straight areas. In most cases you should fine-tune that setting by clicking on the spline and go down to intermediate points then you can check different um, interpolations like natural or uniform or adaptive and subdivide it. So when you uh, our modeling you should always keep in mind that it's possible and it should be um, thought about how detailed you, you your splines are because if you have many many black lines really close together it shows you created too much geometry which leads to really long render times especially if you copy those objects quite often so you should always try to use the lowest angle possible or the lowest number of, of subdivisions and it depends on the distance from your camera to the object on how detailed you need those objects. If you're really close this might be a little too rough so you go down with the angle. If you are really far away and say this is a sign 10 meters away from your camera you should lower, uh, excuse me in this case you should and make this value a little bigger because you really don't need that much detail. So then you can do a quick check going to command R and check if it look if it's looking okay or if it's too rough in your opinion. Of course there's more you can do. Let's just take an n-sided spline. You could change its subdivision and the inside spline is really useful if you want to do stuff like cables or um, any circular shape that doesn't need to be perfectly round. You can also or you could round its edges like like this so for creating screws for example this should be a nice base. Let's just 
create a mouse pad just for a really quick exercise, you would then choose a rectangle because that's the shape a mouse pad has uh, roughly. Then you go to plane, put it on the ground using X and Z as the plane. And then you just care about its basic size. So it might be, I just put in rough numbers, 30 by 20 centimeters, which is a bit huge actually, but never mind. Let's uh, scale it down a little. And maybe, yeah, I don't really care about its exact dimensions and you always have those little round edges here on a mouse pad and all you need to do now is use the extrude NURB again and put that rectangle in the extrude NURB and now one thing is going wrong it's extruding along the Z axis because this stands for X Y and Z so the right thing would be to put put uh, point 0 0.6 in here. You can just type 0 0.6 or even a little lower. Maybe it has four millimeters, and that would be the mouse pad. Of course, it's too. It doesn't have the right proportions. So let's just go to the rectangle again and scale it up. Maybe reduce the extrusion again. So you basically would uh, switch between the spline object, this one, there you can change those values, the rounding, and then you go to the generator and you can change stuff here. So again, we check the corners and think about, do we need that many subdivisions? If not, we can go to the angle and maybe reduce it a little. That would be a nice model. It's not too complex, but it still works. Okay, that was just an example. I will delete it and we will have a look at the yellow splines you can draw yourself. Oh, one more thing. If you have um, created your own spline like this, let's just take the star for ex as an example, um, and you're happy with the basic shape, but you want to change something which is not creatable by those settings, you can just select the star and click on this icon here or press C and then you can go to the point mode to be reached by here by clicking here and then you can select single points or several points with the rectangle selection here and for example move them around like this or you could for example take those guys here and use the scale option to, to change their distance. You can, for example, take those points here and scale them to, to make, to put them further away. Or you could also go to rotate and rotate them around. Maybe like, like this. Okay. If you want to, you, you can tell though now all those tools for creating splines are activated as well. Then you could play around with um, these points uh, even more, but we will do this later on. I will delete that star and now we go to drawing the low splines yourself. When drawing splines, it's really important that you think about 
from which perspective you draw them. Because if you draw them uh, from, from a free positioned camera, let me just click the linear one and I draw it like this, then you will see if you turn your camera around it that the spline is not lying on the floor, it's not on the, on a um, wall or something, but it's just um, sort of um, floating in the in the room. So if you want to put it on the ground or someone uh, somehow in in a rectangular manner, then you should draw the spline in you. Just click on it and hit delete while your mouse is here. Um, go to the top view, for example, using your middle mouse button, you can switch between the windows. And then I just draw the linear spline seen from top. And now in 3D, I can double check that it's lying on the floor. Now the cool thing is yet yeah, that you can change any spline after you've drawn it to another type like cubic or a kima, B spline and bezier. So when you are clicking here, you don't have to decide immediately which spline you're going to take, whether it's Bezier, B spline or anything else. Let's see the differences between those splines. The first one is a freehand spline. It works like that. You just put click or you just hold down the left mouse button and do something like this. And you can see like right to my mouse cursor, there's the value for tap tolerance. It's put to 10 centimeters. So it means each 10 centimeters, um, it's, it's checking for, uh, curves or anything. And that's how detailed it positions my, um, my points. And of course, again, I can move uh, those points around. delete them, like clicking on one or, or more and hitting delete, then it's gone. And the thing with scaling or rotating works just fine too. There is, I just go to top view, there is uh, a Bezier spline as well. Bezier spline works like that. You use your left mouse button again, but you don't click single points, but instead you press it down while you're still pressing, you're pulling those, um, um, that angles out those, um, black lines. And next point is done just the same click, hold down and pull it off just like that. If you want to close a spline, you can either click on the first point. This works, I think, since version 13, which we are using. Or you can, if the spline is still open, just click on close spline. Then it connects the last with the first point. You have the thing about the angles here too, but we're, we can't show them right now. We need to, to um, create a shape out of this, like extruding. So that's it for the Bezier spline. Oh, one more thing. I just go to command Z. If you want to change this um, black lines, like uh, the the weighting or something like that, then you can just use scale here to change that behavior and using rotate for a point works too. Just scale it, rotate it and scale it. Just hold down left mouse button and drag it to the right side to make it bigger or 
left to make it smaller. So with Bezier splines, you should be able to draw pretty much any shape you need. The B spline is good for really soft movements, like if you want to use it as a track for a camera. And yeah, there's Cubic and Akima as well. They all work the same. Just click with your left mouse button and there you go. Some go through those points. Other interpolation types like B splines are just using the first and the last one and the others are just control points to have some influence on the way those curves go. Okay, what can we do with that stuff? First, we can um, manipulate them even further. For example, if you have drawn a cubic spline, you can use those tools here to either make them connected straight that works like this you would select two points click on hard interpolation and then you see the following the the points that were not um, selected still remain curved and those two points which were selected now have a hard interpolation so this line is a Bezier now because Bezier supports stuff like having one line bend and the other one straight and then bend again. And you could take, for example, this point again and switch over to soft interpolation so it's calculating a, a rounded shape again. Then you could scale it down again to make it similar to this one. Now, what happens if we just use the rectangular again? Select those guys and say equal tangent length. Let's have a look. Equal tangent length or direction does not work in this case. If you want to select more than two points, just hold down shift. then there is a way to um, break segments by clicking on here. You can sort of start those lines here where it's white and they go to the blue thing. And this one, you can could delete it. This one now has is a spline which is split up. And if you want to connect it again, just take the ones you want to start with, for example, this one and this one and go to join segments and then it's one connected spline again. If you want to change where the spline starts, which is here where it's white at the moment to blue, you could go like this. You just select, for example, this point and then you say set first point. And now this is the first point, this is the second, and so on. Reversing the sequence just turns around these or the order from white to blue. If you want to see those points in more detail by, by actual numbers, you just click here on structure. And this is point zero, this is point one, two, and four or uh, three. So in this matrix, you can see X, Y, and Z. These are the coordinates. You can put in your own numbers here. And those uh, X, Y, and Z values with the arrows um, show the Bezier handles here. So when I change this value to say 50, then this one has changed. In some cases, 
Uh, this might be quite useful for full control. You can ev even copy paste stuff like I hold down control key and drag number three and then I click on number four and then I even have a new point here. Or I just go to two and hit delete and then this point is dis has disappeared. How about um, using create outline? Just select them, click on create outline, press down left mouse button, and then you can sort of make this um, double line. You can also pick a corner here and go to chamfer and then you can make it round. Really useful for modeling later on. So a solid edge can be shaped to, to a round one. Uh, a cross section. I have not used this yet. Let's just see. Okay, we need to look that up. You can line up splines, like if you're having, for example, those three splines here, just click on line up and they will be straight. Then you could rotate them to position them. If you like numbers, then you can go to this one here, the coordinate manager. And for example, if you wanted to put all those lines on the exact same height, you could go to Z value and put in a zero, hit enter. And now they are lined up perfectly straight. So the Z value indicates the distance from here to there. You always have to imagine a rectangle around them and that shows Z, that shows shows X. So if I want to put them um, right on top of each other, then I would need the X value, put in zero, hit enter, and they are on top of each other. I just go to command Z so they are the way they used to be and now I want to change the distance from here to there and reduce it to say 50 units. I just hit 50 in X, hit enter and now their distance is exactly 50. We're not using project spline yet and I can try around. Okay, this is putting in loads of numbers, uh, excuse me, loads of points to make this a little rounder. Might be useful in some cases. And that's it for stuff you can do with splines. The most interesting thing for modeling might be though the generators though. Let's just um, start with a simple one. We, we just draw a shape. Just think about uh, the possibility to, to Put, put the, those things straight by numbers, for example. And then I switch to 3D view again. And let's put that spline into an extrude NURB. And that way we could make it a solid body. Again, click on extrude NURBs. And don't go this way. Hit put a zero in Z. And in this case, I need a number bigger than zero in in Y value, 
if you put zero in, you will just get a flat piece of geometry. Of course, you can subdivide this extrusion. So this would be a building, if you like. You could also put some subdivision in there if needed. And you can change the caps of the extruder by going to either none. So if you use it, I use the one on top, then I can make it a hollow object. Like I can look into it. I can fill it using cap again or use fillet, which makes a shape like this. When I click on constraint, the basic shape gets or is, is maintained. You can choose the fillet type. If you have several numbers, you can also make them, for example, convex or concave concave you might say maybe like so and if you need the cap again go to fillet cap and then you're done half circle like this One step, two step, might be quite useful actually. And engraved, this would be perfect for modeling houses quickly. Pretty good. Another option, how Inward, hull inwards or not. Pretty nice. So the extrude nerve works on any, any spline, those ones and those ones. If you want to create something like a rotational body, use a lathe nerves. It works like this. You go to view from front and the classical thing this is um, used is a, a vase or a glass or something. Just go to cube for example, make sure you click right in the middle. If not, you can correct the coordinates later on. And if that arrow is in the way while drawing, you can use Alt D to just don't show the axis for a second. Keep on drawing. And then if you're done, you can click on Alt D again. So there's your axis again. Now let's select both, both of those points here and you should make sure their size is set to zero X. So if not, if they are like, for example, this, then you should select both of them, hit size to zero. So they are on top of each other. And then the last thing you have to correct is position X. If I put zero in there, they should be perfectly on the green line. This works in view from front. If you were on right, then you see uh, that would be different then. So you would need the Z value. Okay, I could still fine tune 
my spline but that's not what it's about now again this spline cannot be rendered like this it's invisible but you can use the lathe nerb here and put the spline into it and then you have a vase I can pick some some um, points here and still change the shape like I want it. This would be a hat, this would be a vase, small one, and let's always make sure that the lines are not too dense, like in this case, this is a waste of geometry. So just click on spline and reduce the angle so it's not too detailed or switch from intermediate points adaptive to natural. How about this? Or uniform, changing the numbers, just what suits your needs and don't use too many polygons. All right. That was it for lathe nerves. By the way, if you want to know how many points you have selected, you can use that HUD display, this head up display, um, to, to check how many points you have, because in some cases you select one point uh, which which you don't want on the back side or um, you don't have enough points selected because you don't e always see that so how can you do this just go to um, I know how to get it here options configure and then there is a HUD here and then you can select how many total points do I have you it will all show up right here in the left top corner how many edges does it have how many polygons it only shows if we have a polygonal object selected points would be important for this exercise and total points so that's what it shows me here points four are selected out of total 13 points on this spline so when I use my rectangle tool here, I can see, okay, I got two splines out of 13. So those two guys, total points and selected points should be activated. Just have a look at that list. Maybe you want to see the object's name, what camera you're using and so on. Loads of stuff that can be displayed here. Same with view and filter you may want to have a look through that but that's all we need for this tutorial and um, that was lathenerp of course there's more stuff you can change it doesn't need to be an open space a closed space you can open it up you can change the way how often it's subdivided again this should be used for optimization. Don't know about scaling, never used this one so far. But caps might be cool. Cap or fillet cap. Okay, doesn't work on closed things for example if you're pulling out that spline here then it changes the shape here and what can I do here okay not much in this case All right, that's the Leithner object. You usually would use this using 360 degrees, so it's closed. And that's what it's good for. 
let's now switch over to a loft nerb. A loft nerb works like this. It needs two or more splines and they should have the same number of points in ideal. So ideally you would use some spline like Akima, click a shape, then you can copy that shape by going to this one, this use model mode and just hold down control while you're dragging this arrow out, then you have that shape and then you can go to each single spline in point mode, change it the way you want. It can be done in three dimensions if you like. So you could also move it in that direction, but I don't want to right now. And what, excuse me, what the loft nerve does is obvious. It just takes all the splines in the list from here to there and pulls a surface over those curves. Just drag and drop all the splines in there and then you have a shape like this. Again, you can show the splines. Just go to um, display isoparms. This will show you how the structure is basically done display wireframe shows it in all the subdivisions it has and you can still move stuff around afterwards to optimize your shape. That's the same again. You can change the subdivisions. And try out more. You should make sure though that the order of that splines is correct. If you change it by mistake like I did here on purpose, then you get some not so nice overlapping and that's not the way it's meant to be. Of course you can pull single splines out of the list or just delete them. Copying is the same. You hit you hold down control, drag spline and then you have another one. So now you shouldn't expect too much out of this modeling technique. There is things you can do with that, um, like tents or something, but this spline modeling in general might be good for quite a few things or as a base for further modeling if you like. Then there is one more which is used really often. That's the sweep nerve. The sweep nerve's object needs two splines, one profile and one path. So a classical example would be the following. You go in the view from front, choose a linear spline. And if you want to have a railway, you just click here, 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 here. Use the rectangular selection tool and optimize what you've just drawn. Like I select those lines that should be straight, both points, and go to X size 0 and then they are straight. If I want the same heights for each element, I go over them again. Uh, I just see that this thing is way too big. It has 3200 centimeters so I just take the whole thing 
scale it way down and while I am scaling I look at this x value and I try to get it to a few meters maybe like three meters or so so it fits in the world you should always uh, model in in precise numbers and now I can select go to point mode again select those two points and there is a value for the height and then I can go and say one meter choose the other bar and go to one meter again so now I can be sure they both have the same height and then you can think about how long this stair is supposed to be and how steep it is. So now my rail might be shaped like this. I just take the two top points here and go to chamfer, hold down the left mouse button and drag it to the right. So I get a nice round shape. like this and that is my path just hit s to zoom in there whoa and now what we need is a profile running along that path we will we could either use a circle for that, but an end side will do. Let's use a radius of, say, 1.2. So it's really, really small. You could go for 1.5 if you like. And let's leave the sides for six. We can change them in a second. Now let's choose sweep knobs object and just put both objects in. Now one thing which is important is the order. You should first use this end side profile which is this little circle we used and then there is the path. If you switch that order you will get an unpredictable result so just go profile first and then the path and now you could check whether you need more sides of that end side which is called profile now I think 8 will do and you should always check if you need that many subdivisions in in the path so you could change the angle to somewhat a little lower maybe like 14 degrees this should do from most angles and distances if you go really close you need more of course but it should do and now if you're finding out that your your rail is too high you can still go to path point mode and just pick those guys here and there this should be from one point we initially had now we have two in each corner so we have four points in total and you could drag them down or up whatever you need a thing you should be careful about is moving those points in this or that direction because as you can see it gets it doesn't really work with the chamfer we had done before okay that is sweep node modeling of course there's a lot more options you might find useful first of all it's important how you orientated the profile because in some cases it is if, if it has the wrong orientation then you get a really really flat result which doesn't really have that pipe shape but instead it just looks totally flat so make sure the plane orientation is correct 
And then there's so many more options with the sweep NURBS. For example, the scale. You can make it growing bigger on one side or the other. You can make it rotate like like you can see I, I will just make the profile a little bigger so you can see better the sweep nerves and rotation can be done like this for example if you want to do a rope or something you can make this object grow or shrink And you even have options for scaling and rotating by using a graph. Putting in new points is done by control clicking. And then you could change the scaling. If you need more subdivisions here, you should just go to path and go natural. For example, then you could do funny stuff like like this. Okay, there's there's more, but mostly the, those settings will be fine for basic stuff. That was it about the generators. There's a spline mask as well, found to be found under this icon here. And the spline mask is like Boolean, but for splines. For example, you have two splines. I just pick randomly um, an n-sided object and a circle. I make the circle a little bigger. And now I want to create a shape which consists of this for the outer ring and this one for the inner, I can just drag them into the spline mask. And now I have a mode, a union B, a subtract B, a intersect B. Intersecting would only, of course, work if we have something like this going on, this is the circle and this is the end side. And subtracting will be like this or like that. Pretty useful. Again, think about the possibilities you have in animation as well. And I will just stay with subtract and now we put this spline mask into our extrude nerves and isn't that great you can choose the end side for example and make it react to to that I think you can tell better what it does when we're extruding that. So let's just go through. That was union. That's subtracting B A A B. Really great. Yep. That's the spline mask. So it should work on several sp splines and probably groups too. And that was it for what you can basically do with splines. Again, what are the main tools I need? First is for creating splines, this one. Then we had this one for manipulating splines. Then we have 
generators here. Then we had the structure overview. Let me just show you. I draw a Bezier. Then I can use, of course, the classical modeling tools like moving. When I use scaling on a single one, scale here, this works on Bezier only. When I selected two or more points, I can scale them to, to make them closer together or put them further away from each other. I can rotate stuff. But then I have all those options here. Like, for example, hitting Command A and going to create outline again. Stuff like this. Then I have the opportunity to manipulate or to, to create objects out of my invisible splines, like extrude NURBS, put the spline into an extrude. And here I will get some shape. If I want to control the points of that shape I just drew precisely, I would need to go to structure, for example, and I can see all the values for each point. And I can even, for example, copy values from, let's say, this one, go over to the next or this point here and put in the same Y value by copy pasting. hit enter and now they those guys point one and three are exactly on the same height sometimes quicker and less like you're in a matrix is like this you select points i have a shortcut for this so you should click here or put up that shortcut um quicker is going here using Y value for same height, just put in zero. Or if you want to have a distance on the Z axis between this and that point by a distinct number, put in 400, for example, and you can choose the, the distance. Yeah, that's the basic stuff you should know about modeling with splines so you sh should always think about using a combination of splines and primitives here i will do um, another tutorial on primitives so please don't try to model anything out of splines in some cases this might be more work than using primitives or some other methods but for doing stuff like wires, pipes, and um, yeah, some shapes like they are perfectly round, like lathe nerves, like like glasses or anything you can have a central axis in. It's perfect. Um, that should be it. If you want to, we can do a little project with it now so just you get um, used better to how to model with splines so let's just do an actual project i will close those floating windows because in real projects i would never use them and how about we build something okay so now let's use some real um, object or create some real uh, models with with splines first one is really simple we can use a spline to create a curtain and probably the simplest way would be to just go to view from top 
draw a line like a curtain whatever and make sure that those points are for example on the height right below your um, your your ceiling and then you would use the coordinate manager down here change that numbers to world so you can see the height from the floor and there you see that my spline floats on or is located at 40 centimeters high so i put them on two meters 40 centimeters for example so my spline is up here and then i just take the whole thing this one and if i am fine with the shape i i just created i would then go to by generators use extrude nerves put the spline in and then i need to change the extrusion direction delete the value for z and just pull the curtain down by maybe 236 or so so it's right above the floor and you could kind of change the interpolation and look what's best maybe something soft that would be a really really straight curtain again check for really dense lines they should be dissolved by going to the spline and using a lower angle like this if you think it's a bit too edgy just check the spline again deactivate the extrude nerve by going on that symbol and then go to point mode and if stuff is too close together like here or there then just delete single points to make it go more smooth and if you have done it like too too flat in general just uh, hit control or excuse me command a on mac and go to scale go to alt d again so you have your axis tool and you can just pull it like this if you need more like that so for some touch-ups you could even look at some photos or look at a curtain you might have and that way you can optimize the way it looks. That would be a curtain. Of course, it's never quite that straight, but you can use the subdivisions like that. And then you, yeah, again, should lower that dense lines here by making the spline even a bit less subdivided and if you wanted to you could now use that curtain as a base for further modifications um, on polygons on polygon base or use a deformer to to make for example wind blow in there that could be done like i mean we could use wind but you don't always need to to use the stuff that's most obvious because in some cases if i put the wind and the curtain in one group hitting alt g then it gets sometimes a little hard to control because there are many settings and maybe sometimes that's not exactly what you want so the wind is just 
one thing you can use. I rarely use that object as you can see what I like better is let's just pull the curtain out of that null object again and I think the, if you want to change the look of that curtain by yourself you should use maybe an FFD deformer that's a free form deformer and it works like that you just just pull the deformer around the curtain just move it like this and now just adapt the the measurements like it's really wrapping around the the curtain like so and now if you put them in the same group again alt g you could actually delete that line in the middle by just removing grid points in Z direction to go to 2 and now let's go to point mode of the FFD deformer and you could bend it a little like it doesn't look too perfect I think for perfectionists that's a better solution than using some hard to control deformer but that's like a question of of your preferences so you could invest some or yeah use some time here to to get the perfect curtain All right, that was creating a curtain with splines. Now, how about a chair? Let's just go to File, New. So we have a new scene. Again, all the settings we did are um, deleted. So I want 80% gray and that selection tools, in case you, you changed some settings here, will be uh, reset it as well so now how do we draw a chair I would first go to the side view from right and just click a linear spline and after I click the first number I should go to alt D to remove that um, axis just for a second that axis tool and just click the shape we have like this you could also if you need orientation on this on the on the dimensions you can go to I think it's filter and go to grid so the grid might help you just use the middle mouse button to switch between the windows and I just drew this anew because now I know that from here to there it is one meter I think but you can still use the linear spline tool click on it and check the overall size the overall size later on like this is world zero 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 I have to correct this a little this is zero two but it yeah why not it can be 50 centimeters or so this should be straight so I go to size Y and hit zero and it should be on let's say 40 centimeters high height then the last one goes like this Now, of course, this is not enough for a chair. We should move that spline, the whole spline, by clicking on here and take a, get getting back our access tool by Alt D and move it 20 centimeters to the left by holding Shift. We can do this precisely 20 centimeters. Maybe that's not enough. 
So we go to position 25. And now what we can do is we just copy all the points we have here to, to there. And there are several ways to do this. Um, I will just try the quickest way I think. I'm not sure. So let's hold down control, move the arrow to the right side and put in minus 25 here and hit enter. So this is rather wide, but should work. And now we have two splines. There's a trick to combine two objects. It should work for splines as well. Just select both of them in the object manager, use a right click and say connect objects and delete. So now those splines are one object, but, but as you can tell, they are not quite connected yet. So how could we connect them? Go to point mode and the top ones, uh, top points are selected in my case. If they are not use the rectangle tool, just go over it and go to tools, excuse me, mesh, spline and set to join segments. So now they are connected. And now you see this is where the spline starts. This is where it ends. So it should be enough to just click on that spline object so that you can see in the attributes manager, close spline and click there. So now that shape for our chair is done. You could make it a bit closer together, but this won't be the perfect chair anyway. I just do real quick. Let's now care for the rounding. Make sure you select all the points, uh, command R, command A, excuse me, command A, and let's make those um, corners go round. So we go to mesh, spline, and then we have chamfer. Chamfer works either like typing in a, a precise number or you click with the left mouse button, but hold, hold it down, pull it to the right. And when it looks good, just release the mouse button without clicking again. So you shouldn't click now, but just go over to moving tool, for example. So these points are set. What else do we need? Just maybe a end side again, make it a really small radius, like 1.4. Use maybe 12 sides, so it's not too rough. And then we need that, you might have guessed it, sweep nerp again, pull, that's the path. Use arrow up to go to the next object, type in profile and put the path and the profile in there. And then you see the profile is too big. So click on it, go to scale and just click anywhere here in the gray region. Hold down the mouse button while you're doing it and pull it to the left so it gets smaller. Now we could further work on this to, in order to use some, for example, um, loft nerb to, to create some, something to sit on. Like you view it from, from the front, for example, um, for more details, I go to detail wireframe. It's not activated in top view, right view, front view. It's just activated in 3D view. I'm talking about um, the wireframe mode here. So I can see better here. And now I would just draw a spline like this.
cubic doesn't seem appropriate, so B spline is much softer. And we can try that option called, I just hit Command A and go to Mesh Spline Create Outline. Of course, this is really imprecise now, but you can do it better like this. And then I will just position the whole thing. If you don't want the axis to be on the ground, but rather in the middle, middle you go to, um, where is it gone? It should be um, to, to just position it. There is some axis center, you can say axis center too, so it just snaps in there. And then let's move it so it starts right here. And then we use an extrude NURB this time, going like this, extrude it even further. And then you copy the extrude NURB, go to view from the side. The extrude NURB doesn't have its center here, so let's try the same trick again by going to axis center again, axis center 2 doesn't work, so axis center to parent, you know what, might be easier just clicking here or pressing L, moving it manually here and make sure to click on this again or to type L again so you're out of this mode again. Go to rotate, try to get this like steepness and move it over. Okay, it's not beautiful, but it's a really quick way to create a chair. And I think that's it for modeling with splines. And now I want to show you a feature I rarely use, but it's really asked by architects because architects like to model with splines and they, they want to have stuff like snapping and like a way of um, snapping to points and, and things like that. So again, you don't need it for modeling necessarily, but if you're missing a feature like this, I will like to show you. The easiest way to see the menu is by pressing P and then you get a snapping menu. If you want to have it floating around, then just click on that rough surface right on top so you can enable snapping and i would like to to tell you how how to use it but first i delete that chair you can save it down if you like and now how does snapping work snapping works like this you can just for example if you are want to draw a spline that uses that grid on the floor. You can just do so by using linear, for example, using 3D snapping because we want Cinema 4D to detect those points wherever they are and just activate grid snapping. Only this should be activated. And now I can click freely around in 3D view rotate my camera around and I see it didn't work in any case so let's just move it there and you can see when I get closer it snaps. If you want to increase this um, snapping radius 
So when you're just drawing, there sh should be an option. Like if you go to move tool, there is snap settings and there is an entry called radius. You can just put this up so it snaps more easily. And this snapping options and these are the same. If you just read through the list, that's very similar. And that way you could, you could draw on the grid you have in the background. Um, of course, you can change the grid. I think by going to options configure, there is a way to activate it or deactivate it. There's um, a grid somewhere like here. And there is Uh, the options for the grid might be among preferences, but we'll see. I I don't really uh, know where to find it now, but there should be a way of um, changing the grid units. Shouldn't be a problem. If you want to have your own grid somewhere, you could use as well the an object called construction plane and this construction plane replaces your the grid you had so you can do your own like grid spacing if you have 12.5 for example or something exotic then you can choose how many lines you want to to show and what's and the, the subdivisions, so you don't need to change the base grid. And the cool thing about the construction plane is that you can give it different orientations like vertical or yep, just just turning them around. And you could rotate it either by going to rotate tool and moving it around and holding down shift to have it in five degree steps or you go clicking on construction plane, you use the coordinate manager and you can just put in a precise number like 13.5 or something. And then when you draw a new spline, I just delete that one. If I'm here and I'm in point mode, I will only be able to, to select, uh, to delete selected points. If you want to delete the whole thing, click here first and then go delete or delete it from the object list. So now if you want to draw on the plane, just click there, there, I just go to Alt D, press Alt D to remove my arrows. And now this should be precise. And close it. Now let's see. Yep works perfectly and um, yeah that would be one way of snapping of course you can snap to objects you have in your scene like I have that cube it's um, created on on the construction plane as well so its orientation is by that 13 point something degrees but I don't care and now you want to maybe to have I just deactivate the construction plane to make it clearer. I want to connect from this point to this corner. So let's see how to activate this. Go to your snapping sections again. Deactivate grid snapping so it's clear what we want. We want a snapping in three dimensions from this point to here. So let's say point snapping. and. I draw a new spline from again maybe linear from here to there and let's just see it works just fine so any architect who complains about imprecision in Cinema 4D should check 
the snapping options before he complains. Okay, um, that's three-dimensional snapping. In some cases, you may want to have a so-called 2.5D snapping. This means when I, for example, draw from, from above, I just go to display grow shade lines and I want to have a line which is which runs from here to there but it should be a flat line I will just do that I click here and there and seen from top it is perfect and when I see it from from here I see it is also perfectly flat so in some cases I might want this okay that's a little off but only because this one is not straight so if I sorry if I was to drag this point up it's exactly underneath that corner so that would be 2.5 snapping and so what's the difference between 2d and 2.5d snapping it's like that 2.5d snapping snaps to any object whatever height it is but it draws two-dimensionally if i go to 2d snapping it will only snap to points or axes or whatever you can activate here which are on one plane so again what's the difference 3d snapping is is between all objects or all points in the room it snaps to anything no matter on what uh, height but it make it gives you like straight connections they can be uh, go in any direction then you have 2.5d snapping which works if you are looking from one direction and it always makes splines in in a plane so they they are straight those guys here are just straight as you can see those ones are 3d and if you're going to 2d it probably will not snap to all those things so 2d doesn't snap to to stuff that's not not on the on the same height okay just um, check for yourself where it can snap to, to axis midpoints and many other points and centers so it's a really great tool okay I think that was it about spline modeling of course there is the usual suspects like arranging stuff we could try and But I think we, we had enough for, for this lesson. Thank you.